everybody, my name is Mars, you can call me MG if you'd like, and today I have a very special video. This is my TBR for the Magical Readathon 2024 Autumn Equinox. Whole lot of words. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I will leave links in the description for you to check out. The creator of this readathon is G, and basically she has created this entire magical world and a magical school for us to attend. That's the theme of the readathon. So basically what you do is you create a character. My character's name is Varenis Argeth. She's very cute and I love her. And you choose a calling for that character to go to. So my character's calling is Moon Warden. That's what she's studying to become. And then there are classes with different prompts to fulfill and each calling has a different class list that you have to take. Some are easier, some are harder. Moon Warden I feel like is slightly easier than most of them, but it's also just the one that felt the most right for this character, so that's what I went with. And this Autumn Equinox is a little bit more difficult than the Spring Equinox that happened earlier this year. For the Spring Equinox, you only have to read one book per class, that's just the setup of it. The Autumn though, there are three different prompts for each class, and sometimes you only have to read one, sometimes two, sometimes three, depending on what the calling sheet says. I'm going to make things difficult for myself and read all three books for all four classes for a total of 12, even though technically I only have to read six books in order to complete this calling. I just want to be a little bit of a completionist here and hit all of those prompts. So I have a very large stack of books next to me and quite a few prompts to go through, so I'm just going to get started on this and tell you what I'll be reading in September for this readathon. So the first class that my character has to take is Restoration, and the first level of that class, the prompt is to read a book with a night sky on the cover, and I have gone with Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. This is an edition that I got in a free little library, and it has these blue sprayed edges and looks absolutely stunning. I'm not sure if this is technically the night sky. I haven't read the book, so I don't know how this all plays out, and I know it's kind of like a weird book that starts off in the 1900s but then tells a story over the course of like 500 years and ends up on a colony on the moon. So I don't really know how that messes with things, but it looks like a night sky to me, so that is what I'm going with. I am so excited to read this. I don't know anything beyond what I just told you, so I'm going into this semi-blind and I am just so excited. <laughs> The second level prompt is to read a book that has a poisonous plant on the cover or in the title, and this is the first of two ebooks that I'll be reading in the month, and that is Hemlock Island by Kelly Armstrong. I don't know anything about this except that there's like an isolated setting, and I love me a horror with an isolated setting. I have read from Kelly Armstrong before. I read her, it's called like Darkest Powers series, I think? The first book might be called The Calling? I'm pulling this from like a decade ago memory. I read these when I was in like middle school, high school, so I don't know if any of that is correct, but I just know I've read from this author before and I liked it then, so I'm hoping I like her writing now. And I'm very excited to get to this because I think this might be a good comp title for a book that I will be publishing later this year, so that's always a fun time. In the last level for Restoration, the prompt is to read a book with a verb in the title. And I will be reading this book physically, I just don't have it yet. It is en route to me, but the book I'll be reading is The Stern Chase by John Flanagan. I think this is a little bit cheating because in the title, the word chase might be used as a noun. At least that's what it feels like to me. But chase is also a verb, and this was a very hard prompt to fulfill, so I am going with it even if it's not exactly correct in this case. This is the ninth book in the Brother Band Chronicles. It's the last one that's out, so I'm excited to sort of be wrapping up this series. I don't know if there's going to be more in the future, but for now this is the end and it's going to be a great time, I already know. The next class for the Moon Warden Calling is Astronomy, and the first level the prompt is to read a book that was published in your birth month, doesn't have to be the year, it could be any year, and the book that I've gone with is The Diviners by Libba Bray, and this was originally published on September 18th, 2012, which is the day before I turned 14, because my birthday is September 19th, so very close to being on my actual birth date, but that doesn't really matter, it just matters that it was published in September. And this is the first book in a historical 
fantasy slash paranormal series. I believe it's set in, yeah, the 1920s, and the main character has, um, like, some sort of clairvoyance. So, I'm excited. Libba Bray is another author that I've read from before, but it was a long time ago. I have her book, um, Beauty Queens, which is a retelling of Lord of the Flies, but with pageant girls, and it's been a while since I read that, but I remember it being super silly and super fun. So I'm excited to give Libba Bray another shot and see what I think of The Diviners. The second level prompt is to read a book with a castle on the cover, and I'm definitely fudging this a little bit, but I'm going with Inkheart by Cornelia Funk. This right here looks like the ruins of a castle to me. It's been a while since I've read this. I have read this book like maybe 10 times. I don't know. It's been a lot of times, but it hasn't been recently. I think it's been maybe two years since the last time I read this book, but I'm pretty sure that the villain Capricorn lives in the ruins of a castle in Italy. He definitely lives in the ruins of something in Italy. It might just be a village, but it might be a castle, and I think this looks like the ruins of a castle to me, so I am going with it. I love this book so much. It's one of my favorites from childhood, and even to this day, I still adore it for what it is. So I'm excited to be rereading it. My plan is to reread all three books in this trilogy because there's another book set in this world coming out in, I think, November. So I want to refresh myself on what happens, so I'm ready for that when it comes out. So the first step is reading this one. And the third level for this class is to roll a d6 and then whatever number you roll you need to read a book with that many hundred pages in it. So I will insert footage here of my dice roll. So as you can see I rolled a 2 which means I have to read a book with 200 something pages and I have gone with Thief by Fuminori Nakamura. This is an arc that I found in a little free library. And I don't know anything of it, but I do know that I love Japanese literature. It's something that I've not read a lot of, but what I have read, I've had a good time with. And this is 211 pages, so it fits the dice roll. And I'm excited to see what this is all about. The next class that my character is taking is Spells and Incantations. And the first level prompt for that is a five-star prediction. I don't rate my books out of five stars. So I'm just using this as like a book I think that I'll love, and I'm going with An Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. First of all, just take a second. This cover is absolutely stunning. It was 100% a cover buy. My boyfriend and I were going to a wedding the other week, and we had some time to kill before we had to actually get to the venue, so we stopped by a bookstore, of course. He bought a puzzle, and I saw this, and I'm like, ooh, I think I kind of need this. And this was only $13, okay, $13.99, so $14, so like... If I had the extra money, I was fully prepared to buy all four books because they're all so gorgeous. You can see the little previews on the back. I just, I think these are beautiful. And I don't know much about this book. I know it's like YA fantasy uh, with like themes of war and rebellion. And I'm seeing these characters' names for the first time. I did not know the main character was Leia. And there's a character named Elias. Interesting. Uh, I know Katie from Katie Ann Writes really likes this book, and I trust her judgment, so I'm thinking that I'm gonna love it too, so I can't wait to read this. The second level prompt is a really fun one, and that is any book that has been mentioned in one of G's videos at any time. So I was very strategic about this. I looked at my TBR shelf at all the books that I was thinking I might want to read next month, and I searched in the search box on her channel so that videos would come up. And the first one that I picked actually worked. So I, I'll just show you the book. So the book is The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. So what I did is I searched Brandon Sanderson on G's channel. And the first video that came up was called Top 10 Books of All Time Boyfriends Edition. And this video is like four years old at this point. But in that uh, video, G, I think she was like sick. She like talks from off camera a couple of times, but it's her boyfriend doing the bulk of the video talking about his favorite books. And he mentions Mistborn Era 1 as like his favorites, but an honorable mention is Mistborn Era 2 and the covers go up on screen. So the alloy of law is mentioned in that video. So I'm finally going to be reading this book. 
And then the third level of spells and incantations is to steal a book from someone else's TBR, and I have my other ebook for the month, and that is Quicksilver by Callie Hart. And this is stolen from several people's TBRs because this is the book club pick for the Bujo Buddies book club. And I am scared that I'm gonna DNF this because it's not really my vibe, and also I have heard not great things about it. So I do have backups in case I do DNF this. Technically, I have built up enough points from doing past iterations of the readathon to like buy the ability to use a DNF as counting, but I think if I DNF this, I'll just slot a different book in. I do have the Nostalgia Train book club pick that was not used for any other uh, prompts. We have not exactly decided what that book is going to be. It's been narrowed down to two options, but either way, whichever one it is, is going to be on other people's TBRs. So if I DNF Quicksilver, I will put whatever wins that, uh, that poll as the pick for this, but we'll just have to see how things go. And finally, the last class that my character has to take is Elemental Studies. And the first prompt is to read a book that is related to your favorite scent. This is hard for me because I don't really have a favorite scent. I actually am very sensitive to smells and have uh, scent-induced migraines, so I prefer when things aren't scented. But I have gone with The Drowned Woods by Emily Lloyd-Jones because while I don't like overly strong smells, I do love like general nature smells and like the smell of the sea is a very pleasant one to me. So The Drowned Woods I feel like fits, and I was planning on reading this anyway, so it all works out in the end. The second level prompt for spells and incantations is to read a book that is a hundred pages longer than your last read at the time of watching G's announcement video for all the prompts. And at that time, the last book I finished was Smashed by Junji Ito. It's a short story collection and it's 416 pages. And the book that I have is 513 pages. So technically it's only 97 pages longer, but it is the closest I could get to being a hundred pages. So I am running with it and that book is the Son of Neptune by Rick Riordan. This will, of course, be a reread for me. I am rereading all of the Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus series so that I can finally read uh, Chalice of the Gods, which came out last year, and then another book is coming out this year uh, that are like new Percy Jackson books. So I'm very excited for this reread. I just love everything Rick Riordan has written. The entire Percy Jackson universe is so fun to be in. So I'm very excited for this. And the last prompt to talk to you about today is a book with sparks on the cover. So it's kind of a weird one. I didn't really know what she meant by sparks, but the book I've gone with is A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness, which I don't know if you can tell, but like on the background, there are these little like stars and sparkles that are a slightly lighter blue than this dark blue sky. This would have worked great actually for Night Sky on the cover, but then I would have had to find another book for this prompt, so um, I think it's all worked out in the end. So I'm not sure if these are exactly sparks, but I think it counts. This is a book that I... When did I get this book? Did I... I either thrifted it or found it in a free little library. It's very obviously used, but I am excited for this because this is adult fantasy that might be historical a little bit. I'm not really sure on that end, but I'm gonna give it a go. I know it's very popular, so I can't wait to check it out and see if it's something that I like. So those are all 12 books that I plan on reading for the Magical Readathon this September. My plan is to do four vlogs, one for each class, so like all three books that fit the prompts for one class will be together in a vlog, etc, etc. So I'm looking forward to that, and I hope you guys are looking forward to watching those so you can see what I think about all of these books. If you've read any of them, let me know down in the comments. Also, let me know if you're participating in the Magical Readathon and tell me all about your character and the calling they're going for. I just, I love this readathon so much, and I'm really excited to hear about everyone else's characters and all the books that you're going to be reading for the readathon, too. Just let me know all of the details so that we can have a nice conversation. But for now, this is the end of the video, so if you've enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel for more content. That way I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye everyone!